Seattle Street Sink came out of uh, the desperate need for more hygiene services, specifically hand washing during COVID. Real Change has been working on hygiene issues for a while now. Um, in the fall of 2019, we ran a campaign called Everybody Poos to fund five mobile pit stops for about $1.2 million, and we won that campaign. So we saw this, this need. We, we saw the CDC saying that hand washing is a really strong way to prevent the transmission of COVID. And while the city did prop up some more hand washing stations, it wasn't sufficient and they weren't necessarily placed in areas with a lot of dire need. So I reached out to Alexander Froelich, actually from the um, American Institute of Architects, a Hail Mary, like does anyone here know how to put together a sink in a really quick way? And we kind of formed this, this Clean Hands Collective group and and they put together designs for a Seattle street sink. And we placed the first one at Roots Young Adult Shelter. And it has been incredibly successful. I, working with this team, I feel like a, a deep connection to community and, and a lot of um, humility for what we are able to accomplish together so that this population that Real Change serves on a daily basis isn't also forgotten in um, public health models to reduce the transmission of COVID. So I'm Rick Moeller. I'm an associate professor of architecture at the University of Washington, and this is the Seattle Street Sink. Really, my colleague in architecture, Elizabeth Golden, got a call from Tiffany McCoy at Real Change about the need for hand wash facilities um, in the face of COVID-19. And so what we came up with was a stock utility sink and a um, stock galvanized steel feed bin that works as a rain garden. Our goal in this was to come up with something that would be inexpensive, that would use off-the-shelf readily available parts, and it would really be a DIY system. So it's like a $30 utility sink. It's got a metering faucet which turns itself off so that the water can't be left on. A uh, soap dispenser, and then it just simply drains into the rain garden. So if you adjust the sink and the water was running down the street, the concern was that you were just spreading germs down the street. So we came up with the idea of having introducing the rain garden as a way to treat the water before it left the street sink facility. And they're all plants that are recommended by the city in terms of rain garden plants. These are all things that you can find at your, your local hardware store, very easy to, to locate. Because the sink is big and deep, we wondered if how it might be used in addition to people just washing their hands um, we thought that people might wash their clothes in it and we found out from jared who's the executive director of roots that in fact people have been washing their clothes in this sink so what we did is included the stopper as part of the sink on a steel cable so no one can walk away with it to simply make it easier for people um, to do that so we're excited by any and, and, and all uses for the sink that contribute to people's health and, and well-being. We have a second version, which is uh, more easily used by someone in a wheelchair. The downside of this design, which is very inexpensive and very easy to do, is that it's not accessible to either kids or someone in a wheelchair. So we do have a second version, and we're hoping that the city will adopt this, in particular the second handicap accessible version. These are very easy to implement. It's $400, a couple of hours of volunteer time, and anyone can host these. And taking care of them is as simple as uh, filling up a soap dispenser every couple of days. So it's a way to really democratize the care of your fellow, your fellow humans um, in a way that anyone can do and that makes it a more humane city. This is definitely a team effort. Um, it was really because Tiffany uh, McCoy with Real Change reached out to the AIA Committee on Homelessness. Elizabeth Golden uh, saw that call and reached out to Rick and to Jeff Howe uh, at the University of Washington. And then they reached out to me um, about thinking through the site design of this. That, that team was kind of the core team, 
But what's been so rewarding is all these different partners coming to the table and bringing their expertise, bringing their skills. Uh, we have Anita from the Sikh community, who's also in the medical community, who's bringing her expertise as a doctor. And Karen Breitmeyer, who is a wonderful accessibility um, consultant in town, who helped work through that second prototype to make it more accessible to everyone. We have Meher, who is uh, helping with the website design. People are pitching in and, and doing what they can to make this be a success. And we hope that the street sinks, as they're de deployed across the city, become a little bit of a softening to that hard street cityscape. A place for people to gather, a place for people to be, and a place ultimately where you can live a healthier life by washing your hands and helping minimize the spread of, of different pathogens.